when I emerged, the main room was a wreck. Fresh blood dripped down into my mane. Looking up, I saw the blast-torn remains of the pony in its twisted metal cage. <sighs> Celestia damned them to hell. More determined than ever, I stripped the raider bodies, what little was left of them now, of their armors. The armors were in shredded tatters, but with some effort I was able to use the best parts of each to patch together something that could give me better protection than my stable-issued utility barding. The resulting outfit had almost no pockets, so I would have to dig the utility suit out of my saddlebags to get at most of my tools, but it was a fair trade. Putting it on was gruesome, to say in the very least. My hooves were darkened with blood just from working on it. Every inch was covered in the flash-fried gore of dead ponies. I almost lost my nerve and abandoned the awful thing, but I slipped it on. My stomach rebelled, but I didn't have any more to throw up. A last look around while I figured I still had time. The raider above obviously assumed I was dead. I would have assumed I was dead too. Looting the bodies garnered me a little bit more ammo. The gun from the earlier raider had been in bad shape to begin with and was damaged beyond repair by the explosion. Several ponies apparently collected bottle caps, which struck me as an absurdly odd thing to hoard. I left those alone. The kitchen's refrigerator had a s small stockpile of food cooked radigator meat, a few skewers of barbecued fruits, and what the Pipbuck identified as bloat sprite meat, and a box of pre-war cake, because nothing says healthy like eating 200-year-old food, and some water that looked like it was bottled straight out of Sludge River. I took everything but the cake and the water. Apparently, Spide Torso Cutie Raider was a rather decent cook. With a second thought, I looked over the ingredients on the cake box, filled with enough preservatives that your stomach will be intact long after the rest of you is rotted away to dust, and I took it too. The raider pony was in the main room, looking over his handiwork when I returned from the kitchen. One look at me, and my growing pile of weaponry, and he fled up the stairs. I galloped after him, revolver zipping through the air in a cloud of levitation magic that matched the light around my own horn. He went through a door on the level above. It took me only a moment to reach it, but caution made me skid to a stop before bailing through. If that had been me on the other side, I'd be waiting just to the side of the door, ready to take the head off of the raider who rushed through. With positions reversed, I was not going to make the same mistake. A filly's cry from inside changed the scenario, though. Standing to the side, I threw open the door. There was no attack, so I darted in and stopped short. The room was lined with more destroyed books on either side and ended in a large window that opened onto a balcony. This room was decorated as disgustingly as the last, but filled with stained sleeping mattresses. Near the open window, a filly, too young to even have her cutie mark, lay on a mattress stained with so much blood that it was nearly black. She had been brutalized and raped repeatedly, and her flank was covered in small burns where her cutie mark would have eventually appeared. Her ropes were on the floor nearby, looking chewed through, and between myself and her, the raider pony stood with this shocking hostage, the zombie pony. It took me a moment to realize she must have flown in from the balcony, and if I was allowed to believe that there was any decency left in the world, it would have been her who gnawed the filius ropes free. Now she was against a wall, with the blade of an axe to her throat. A small part of my brain insisted on distracting me by wondering how the zombie pony could have flown when her wings didn't have any feathers. As if that was a more significant mystery than how she could be alive by some definition in her decayed physical condition. My distraction was distracted by a nearby table. An ashtray with a smoking cigar told me just how the filly had gotten those burns. Rage welled up inside of me until I could feel it bursting through my eyeballs. Next to the ashtray, two familiar metal apples rested on top of an only lightly stained book with a stylized pony skull on the cover. A second book, this one showing a revolver almost identical to the one floating next to me, had slipped to the floor where it rested against one leg of the table, along with several pencils and a filly's lunchbox. A smiling, gentle white unicorn with a beautiful lavender and pink mane stared beneath the StableTech logo. It felt wrong that something so innocent-looking should be in this place. My eyes turned to the Earth Pony Raider with the axe in his teeth. For a moment, I just hated at him the room, quiet except for the filly's occasional whimpers. When my voice returned, my words surprised me. By Celestia, you're stupid. 
Hard to tell a pony to back off or surrender when your mouth is full of axe, isn't it? Maybe if you've spent some more time... Maybe if you've spent some more time reading these books rather than destroying them, you'd be smart enough to come up with a plan that actually allowed you to negotiate a way out of this. The grenades levitated off the table, and I dangled them between us, one that doesn't end with me shoving one of these up your tail hole. The raider pressed the axe way tighter against the zombie pony's throat, enough to cut flesh, which split and pulled back as if it had been strained taut. Ichor that might have once been blood oozed from the wound. The zombie pony didn't flinch or whimper, but the fiddly did both. <laughs> right, kill her! The revolver floated next to my grenades. That way, there won't be anything to block my shot. I could see the raider considering his options and not liking what he was finding. Dropping the axe from his mouth, he whinnied pathetically and dashed for the open balcony, leaping over the cringing filly. Sass sent four shots directly into his ass. It was a pathetic way to die. Looking to the filly and zombie pony, I smiled grimly. There's one left. I'll be right back. I turned and continued up the stairs towards the upper balcony in the sniper pony. Better equipped, and a lot more confident, my heart still flickering with righteous fire, I made my way carefully out of Ponyville. Up ahead, I spotted a huge gazebo surrounding a marble statue of a rearing pony girded with combat barding, a sword in his mouth. The gazebo was relatively free of graffiti, and peeking through the binoculars, I could actually see why. The field of weeds around it were absolutely teeming with radigators. My EFS was filling with red marks as I drew closer. Slipping out my newly acquired sniper rifle, I picked off a few. Their meat, I knew now, was safe when cooked. At least, relative to other food sources in the equestrian wasteland. Slipping the sniper rifle back into its harness, another gift from the sniper pony, I slid out the serrated knife and crouched up towards my kill. An alert flashed on my pit buck. Checking it, I discovered that it had labeled the gazebo in front of me, the Macintosh War Memorial. Curiosity pulled me closer. Careful of radigators, I neared enough to read the inscription beneath the statue through my binoculars. In honor of Big Macintosh, hero of the Battle of Shattered Hoof Ridge and his noble sacrifice for all of Equestria. As I lowered the binoculars, I caught sight of something else. A concrete circle sticking up from the ground, roughly halfway between myself and the gazebo, with a pony hole cover. Remembering the night before, I turned my pit buck back to the first radio broadcast on the list. From those damned apple trees up near the stable, and now he's terribly sick. Too sick to move. We've holed up in the old cistern near the old memorial. We're running out of food and medical supplies. Please, if any pony hears this, help us. Message repeats. Pulling out the revolver, wary of radigators, I crept towards the cistern opening. I was almost there before one of the beasts charged it, and its huge maw opening to reveal rows on rows of razor-sharp teeth. I fired twice into its mouth. Horrifyingly, that wasn't enough to kill it, but it did make the beast think twice. The sound of it, however, brought more of them down on me. Abandoning the revolver in fright, I used my magic to pull open the pony hole and dived in, sliding the cover over behind me. In the wake of my anger, I was exhausted. In the aftermath of the library battle, my whole body ached from exertion. My nerves felt frayed from the constant adrenaline. Eating a bloat sprite skewer, I looked over the small underground chamber once more before curling up on the upper bunk of the pair of bunk beds built into the wall. I tried not to think of the cold skeleton on the bed below me. The skeleton of his father was by the door. A sip from my canteen took the edge off of my thirst. It was almost empty, I had to conserve. I reflected how, when I had come back downstairs after dealing with the sniper pony, the zombie pony was already gone and had taken the poor filly with her. I hoped it was to some place safe. I found it strange that the most decent pony I had found in the wasteland was already sort of dead. I also noticed that the assault rifle pony was also gone. He had woken up and freed himself from the crushing bookshelf. That meant that there was at least one more raider in the wastes, but I wasn't the sort of pony to kill some pony while they slept. Not even a raider. 
I figured that if I slept here tonight, that would give the Radigator some time to wander away from the exit. If I was lucky, I would even spot where I dropped the revolver. Until then, I would preoccupy myself with my two new books. Slipping them out of my saddlebags, I looked the first one over, the one with my lost revolver on the cover. Guns and bullets, very straightforward. I set it aside for now. The second book, a gray tome with a black pony skull on the cover, was the real prize. Opening it to the first page, I began to read. The Wasteland Survival Guide by Ditsy Do. Footnote, level up. New perk, bookworm. You pay much closer attention to the smaller details when reading. You gain 50% more skill points whenever you read books.